new on Curiosity Stream. I'm James Burke. I'm going to take you on a journey through time. James Burke's visionary series returns, reimagined for our time. Now, this is all uncharted territory. The Washington Post hails Burke as one of the most intriguing minds in the Western world. The New York Times raves he careens from one great moment in history to another. Where do we want to go from here? Experience all new connections. So what's the next connection? With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at CuriosityStream.com. So you're out there in Los Angeles? Yeah. So what are you doing out there? Are you doing a lot of recording? Is that where you're, you've based yourself recently? Um, so I'm actually right now I'm in Orange County because I'm finishing up my senior year at Chapman. Huh. But I, um, I think a month from today, I'm moving to Los Angeles because I do do the drive from Orange County to LA at least three times a week. So well, that's a drive. Yeah. Get used yeah. to being in the car. Yeah. Put on a good podcast, put on some a playlist and then i'll be set <laughs> <laughs> now do you get any uh ideas music ideas lyric ideas uh, melodies that you have to pull over and say wait a minute i gotta get this down on uh in my uh, in my phone here uh sometimes recently yeah now that i think about it but it's more i will put my voice memos on and i'll just either say the line or if i have a melody i'll be like nah, nah, nah. yeah it just hits you right yeah so i have to go back i don't know how it sounds but there's been a couple times where i've had to i had a good idea get it down somewhere <laughs> yeah it's got to be down there because it just says you're always working in that sense that you're you know you're always hearing something you got an earworm something's gonna hit you at that point so that that's a really good thing actually nice that you have that instead of like having to write with pen and paper you got your phone and you can just actually enunciate that into the phone yeah, it's such a game changer. I do still like my go-to is a pen and paper just because one, I don't know why, but just physically writing down a certain idea or lyric, it just, it gets stuck in my head and it just drives me to think about it a lot more than just like jotting down an idea. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's something, you know, having that physical contact and when I would write articles, I would like scrunch it just to make sure I was like getting a lot in on one page. And I feel like I was like accomplishing something. It's very psychological. Yeah. And it's just something about like you get to put a specific note on one point of the paper and rather than just like lining it up, because I'll be like, oh, never mind. I want to put something on the side just in case we have to change it or uh, idea for another song. So my <laughs> notes are actually just all over the place. But I like it that way. That's cool. So how much are you coming up with? Are, are you, do you feel you got a pretty heavy volume of stuff in your songbook? Obviously, nothing's that, that's hit the recording studio yet. But uh, do you have a huge notebook full of stuff? Yeah, it's packed. Because um, I also, it's not just where I write my songs. It's where I actually journal. Um, I do go back to these journal entries or whatever I'm cool. writing about and kind of just... Sometimes I do take stuff from that and I'm like, oh, that's actually a really cool concept to put uh, for a song. But um, yeah, so it's a mixture of songs, ideas, dreams, yeah. stuff going on in my life. A little memory book. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So going way back, growing up, uh, Miami born. And uh, how did the music hit you? You were around eight years old. And things were really uh, just starting to come to fruition for you. Yeah, it was um, a lot of musical theater. Um, I was doing a lot of musical theater. I was back and forth for a couple years between do I want to act, do I want to sing, and then I realized that the reason why I'm doing musical theater is because it gives me another excuse to sing in front of an audience. Um, so. Yeah, a lot of when I was around eight and younger, um, a lot of recitals, spring flings, the Christmas oh, recital. Fun. So <laughs> I was I loved it. We we sang the same songs for like eight years, but you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. every time. <laughs> yeah, you nail it after a while. You really get it like down, and it becomes like comfort food to you after a while. I'm sure. Yeah, don't even need the songbook just 
put the binder <laughs> aside, <laughs> ready to sing. You started singing in kindergarten by the time you got to eight uh, and you wrote what was called your first song. Uh, what was that one about? Um, it's called The Only Girl. It was, I had just, I got a iPod, an iPod for Christmas and I downloaded this app where you mm. can record your voice and mm. they'll have a beat Sure. And I wasn't, I wasn't really uh, sure how to use it. I knew how to press record and I knew how to find a, like how to find all the beats that they gave, that they offered. So um, I wrote this song called the only girl for my Valentine in I think third grade, I th eight years old, third. Yeah, that's about right. That's... <laughs> <laughs> and it was way more than I expected. I was, I got too deep into it. I was like, you're the only girl I'm going to love or like only one I'm dreaming about. <laughs> there was another one called, why don't you love me? And I'm just like, what, what was baby Rudy going through? <laughs> like he really was trying to make that heartbreak anthem or the song that everyone's going to sing at their wedding. <laughs> yeah, there you I don't go. Know. He was manifesting, but no, years <laughs> later, we're still doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So you were in Miami the whole time growing up. And did you graduate high school from there? Or did you move away? Yeah, I was in, I've been in South Miami till I was 18. And then I moved out oh. to California. Okay. And Andrew Chapman uh, doing, is it film studies? Is that what you're up to? Yeah. That's neat. So you must have you always been in were you into musical theater type film or just a, a, the huge array of them? Um, I, I I really love watching any kind of movie. I I do my guilty pleasure is like the psychological thrillers and the horror movies or kind of I was a big Harry Potter kid, um, but I just like having that story where you're just like gripping against the couch or the movie theater chair, just something that draws your attention and your body can't even handle it. I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm, I'm so dramatic with my friends whenever we go see these films because I'm something, you know, something's gonna happen or something's approaching and I'm just like holding onto my friend. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, they're coming. They're gonna be dead. They have no idea. They need a plan right now. I'm trying to think of the plan for them. <laughs> getting all emotional and getting into it like you're rooting for them. You know, I, I know that feeling when you're watching something like that. And you're just yeah. like, there, there is. It really has an effect on you, even though psychologically and physiologically. It's I, I love those movies. So I guess that's, I love just having some sort of reaction when watching a film. Same with music too. I get those body chills whenever I listen to someone hitting a crazy riff or belting those high notes. I'm just like, how yeah. do this do that? <laughs> how do they do it though? I mean, somebody who's like talking to normal voice and like they hit these insane notes and do a really good rich falsetto. It's like, how do you, does somebody train you to do that? I guess I'm, I'm still learning. So yeah. If anyone, if anyone has the answer, please. Let me know. <laughs> so, so far you got a pretty good catalog going, you got some really uh, nice songs out there. So it's all been singles so far. Have you done a full EP or, uh, and then future you're planning on LPs? Um, I actually, it's funny you say that I posted a TikTok last night, uh, kind of talking about, uh, I went into a year ago, I think it was January, 2021. Uh, I did a writing retreat with my producers and my friends and we wrote five or six songs um, thinking it was gonna be an EP. So it has like my Say Less, Runaway, Treason, Goodnight Moon, and then a couple others that aren't out yet. Um, but I was going to release that whole thing as an EP and then ended up just throwing them out as singles. And by now I was just like, I want to start over and write 
more stuff. I now know what I like. Mm -hmm. I know what my listeners like more. So I kind of want to put that all together and hopefully in the next month or two start really getting into the studio and doing those sessions with the new stuff. And get really serious about getting an EP together. Uh, we're in 2022 now. So like, are you shooting like for fall time or later to really have your own EP out? Or is it just still going to be singles from going on from here? Um, as of now, I have two singles ready for, I haven't figured out the date yet, but yeah. summertime, beginning of summer, in the middle of summer, and then during those singles kind of announce that an EP is coming a full project, but that's all I have for now. Um, Cause I keep talking about my EP with my team and they're like, yeah, where is it? And I'm like, yeah, no, it's coming. We're jotting down the ideas. We're getting ready. Uh, Got to graduate first, you know? That helps. <laughs> yeah, then we'll, then I'll dive into it and grind that out but yeah uh, that's some good stuff out there treason is a really good single i like uh some lyrics that really caught my eye that uh i really enjoy had enough just had to walk away where what are the roots of, of that song treason you know i didn't go through the best breakup but it was just so dramatic a lot of this and that <laughs> drama everywhere. So I just wanted, I thought of the word treason and I just thought it was very dramatic. And I wanted to kind of have a song be as dramatic as this breakup and kind of be like, oh, you committed treason. Um, you did this to me, you did this and that. But I grew from that because it was just such a, weird and terrible situation so I had to learn to let go so it's kind of a little bit of uh extra dramatized version of the breakup and then it also focuses on me working on myself letting go of all that bs and yeah. you know moving forward you know, that feeling of you having your trust broken and it's like, you know, you, you want to get that out on, it gave you a great song, but uh, unfortunately you have to live through that and it's a life experience, but definitely gets out there. It's a pretty, pretty powerful song. Thank you. It's, um, it was very therapeutic to, you know, put that out, but at the same time, still had to go through it, you know, kind yeah. of sucked with the future uh relationships whatever happened whatever mm -hmm. i want to call it um just because of i did get this sort of um i did have some sort of trust issues after that um but you know learning growing mm -hmm trying to get over it <laughs> yeah that's always there kind of with you so you always have to just basically uh you know deal with it in your own ways and uh, through music it's it definitely seems like it helps i love the video to good night moon how did that come about that's really well done oh thank you it was um it really on set it was all my friends who um were working on it and all the extras were my friends and the band what were my producers who helped me with the song on um on stage with me on one of the scenes. But I remember I called my friend Andy who directed the video. He did my other video, Say Less. And I was like, okay, so I have a song, one of my favorites. I need you on this. He's in New York. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, I'll come to California. I was like, great. So this is what the song is blah 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 and in the lyrics I kind of talk about like bottle service and you know trying to pay, put that club um that picture of a club through the lyrics and I was just like I want to do something not like that at all I don't that's not why I wrote the song so I wanted to do this high school party 
kind of vibe. Um, my dad always calls me Ferris Bueller because I do get away with a lot of things, especially when it's between me and my brother. So I wanted to kind of give off that vibe, dress like him a little bit with the um, hair slicked back, the leather jacket, um, but also having that like teenage angst uh, uh, theme to it throwing a party when your parents are out of town and uh yeah it was so much fun I had a ball just being with my friends and jumping around doing dancing in front of a refrigerator for like six or seven takes and yeah then it became a music video <laughs> <laughs> so the same the same person who did uh say less which is a really fun video too with the palm trees and the lighthouse so it's a, has a really unique look so yeah you must have a, a really good relationship with that director yeah we've been friends for years he i know him through miami he's from miami and so um i when we did say less i thought that video is what got me to be more comfortable with the camera. And I fully give him all props to that. He would yell at me. He's like, you're literally by a lighthouse in the middle of an island. Like, how are you supposed to act? And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to remember the words, but yeah, let's jump around and do this and that. So he really got me out of my um, comfort zone and made me look more natural in the camera so as after we did that video i had to call him out for good night and i'm like we we have to work again yeah yeah so this kind of goes back to uh your miami roots uh heavily cuban roots to our um are, are your grandparents from cuba or your parents are you how how much are you removed from the uh the havana scene so my dad is from cuba and his whole side of the family is cuban and um, being in California, um, there are, um, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I've lost my sense of like being able to speak Spanish because I don't necessarily speak it, um, as much as I do in Miami. Because whenever you're in Miami, if you, you don't know at least how to have a decent conversation, you're kind of you're well I don't, I don't know how to explain it it's just like yeah i've gotten that vibe i've been to miami yeah yeah you just kind of have to pick it up or else you're screwed um yeah but it's a lot more chill in california so i'm not using or i'm not speaking it as much so that's also another goal of mine kind of getting it back and bringing back that culture because that's, I learned so much in living in Miami, just with like, not just the Cuban culture, there's so many other cultures, just like you're, and you're surrounded by them. So you're learning so much and it's become a part of your life um, and your friend's life. So it's um, growing up in Miami, that was like, I couldn't have asked for a better um, childhood. And, um, but yeah, coming back, being in california i just kind of have to get back into the rhythm that's so true and if you're not using the spanish uh you know you 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 lose it if you don't use it you're going to lose it and uh that that's you know, with any of these languages you you, you got to practice it all the time so that's that's it's got to be so frustrating if you lost it and then you're trying to relearn it it's like ugh, i can't stand when things like i lose something and i'm trying to relearn that yeah i can Right uh, right now, I would say if someone were to talk to me in Spanish, I'd either take way too long to answer in Spanish mm -hmm. or I'll be able to just answer in English. So I still yeah. have a little bit, but I might have to pull out the textbook real quick and do a little Spanish 101. Yeah, it's a great music scene. Did you have... Um people who you looked out uh, looked up to when you were in Miami uh, from you know the Miami, Miami sound machine anybody like that had influence on you um 
Shop the Plato's Closet Black Friday event in North Charleston and West Ashley and let the deals begin. You know Plato's Closet always has a huge selection of trendy recycled styles at amazing prices, but Black Friday deals are different. They're better. We've been holding back some of our best inventory and you won't want to miss our Black Friday event. Save on gently used styles from Patagonia, Lululemon, Lily Pulitzer, and hundreds of popular brands. Plato's Closet is ready to let the Black Friday deals begin. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I would say def- uh, definitely, but um, hmm. I got more into um, Latin music, I think around high school, mainly because I um, reggaeton was like very popular. Um, and so I was listening to a lot of that and that definitely I my first song I ever released was like a Spanglish version um, called Contigo so definitely had some inspiration behind that um but I mean when I was younger I would listen to I guess they're my they were my dad's mixtapes or something those little like CDs he put together and it was a lot of Justin Timberlake, Usher, a little bit of Barry White. My family loves Barry White. So it was a whole mix of songs, but I feel like Usher and Justin Timberlake were the ones I was listening to. And I was just dancing in my room, my headphones on. <laughs> oh, wow. What a great uh, way to, to look ahead and say, you know, I'd like to do something like that one day. And then it's like you're on your way pretty much it's just you're you're getting the uh, the education out of the way and uh, you know the world's your oyster at a certain point mm-hmm. yeah i'm almost at the finish line with uh school but yeah no it's crazy to think about how i've always wanted to do this and there's were so many points in my life where i was just like oh I'll be a screen actor i'll do acting i'll just i'll be on broadway i'll try and get myself there and it was actually funny because I uh, applied to so many schools for different things so I did one school for music I auditioned for musical theater I did a self-tape for screen acting Um, so it's cool to see um, or look back at me listening to Justin Timberlake in my room and dancing and singing along with him to me now dancing on stage singing my own songs yeah he's really neat and you know he's done plenty of acting too so i mean if the music comes first i've seen a lot of people just do that crossover and and get into acting later on and mix it all up so you you can do both i mean lady gaga and some of these other people you never would have imagined uh, who were so good in music had all these hit records and then they're able to really crush it in the, in the movies. Triple threats. There. Yeah. I got to work on my dancing, but acting will definitely be um, something I want to get back into at some point. Yeah. Some good dancing in the, I don't know video. Uh, no, Camille Stidham is the uh, director. Is that uh, who you were referring to earlier? Is this uh, another director? This is um, another director and producer. She did both. Um, She's my good friend, uh, my best friend at college. And so when I came back uh, to school, I just called her and I was like, we're going to do my first Mm -hmm. music video and it's going to be amazing. Um, We got all of our film friends together and it was really cool to put together, especially with um, someone who I, I lived like two blocks away from her, um, during that time. So we just like walk over each other's houses and kind of, um, put that together. Yeah. Choreography, Jack Mayer is, uh, I see uh, the credit at the end there. It's 
Really good. I always, I always appreciate great choreography. It's a fun video. I suggest people to check that out. Now, is this on, do you have a YouTube page? Uh, yes, it's, I think under my name, Rudy Tuesday, but uh, just Google it. Yeah. You'll, <laughs> you, if you search up my name on YouTube, you'll find the page. <laughs> T-O-U-Z-E-T make sure that's uh there and you have a main website uh using that name as well yeah it's yeah i never know how to introduce my name because if i just say uh find me at rudy tuesday i'd have to spell my last name first yeah just think <laughs> <laughs> you font that not many people watch my youtube version so i mean we can put the font there but yeah <laughs> yeah t-o-u-z-e-t that's uh it's important to know that and get get the hits on your site and can we order your music through your site too uh, do downloads from there or basically just hear you on spotify and places like that um i think on my website there's it pl- has as the songs listed and then you could just it'll take you to whatever streaming service you use yeah but, some very very deep songs there another favorite of mine is runaway that uh what uh-huh. is the what is the catalyst of that song so i that song has been in the making it took a while we had um I'm trying to think when i was recording Contigo, the first version of Contigo um, back in 2019, I immediately came back with Runaway. Um, So I thought I had a finished product, but I I was holding that one off because I went from like a dance Spanish song to this, it was originally like this slow, we had, um, what? Well, I'm trying to remember the original beat, but um, it was very smooth jazz like, and then so I just kept it for myself um, for a year or two, and then when we uh, were doing this writing retreat, we um, were just kind of going through notes and voice memos and kind of anything I had with me. And I played it and my producers were like, this could be really cool. Let's, can you get the vocals? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I, if you have an idea, I can re-record it too. We um, can definitely start from scratch with this one. And so a year later, they brought out this crazy beat with the drums and bass. And oh my God, it was like, as soon as I heard it, I, I I forgot what I said. I wanted to like smash my head into a wall, like in the best way possible. I was like, this, it goes hard. This is, I, uh, as soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, I'm ready. Whenever you need me, I will be in the closet where I was recording all the songs. (laughs) (laughs) Totally nailed it. Yeah. So you have some really talented uh, engineers, mixers, people like that who could really, uh, make this sound just amazing and it sounds great i mean i'm on youtube and it just uh yeah you 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 got a good team there thank you yeah as our we started working um together my my first song with them was i don't know and then as soon as we finished that song i was i was like i'll see you next week um we actually were doing it via facetime and zoom but after we finished that song i was like we're going to do a lot more. I got a whole <laughs> list for you guys. Um, yeah, we've, I've made all my other songs with them ever since. Excellent. I like great. family. To me. Good day. So are you um, wanting to do live performing? Do you want to get out there and do touring? Is that something that you have in the cards after college? Um, touring is the dream. Definitely want to go on tour. Um, Right now, I actually have, I'm performing at my first music festival next Friday. Hmm. It'll be really cool. Um, It's actually run by Chapman students. And so um, they brought back some alums and uh, some students who are there now. And so when they asked me to perform, I was like, please, 
and it's at this amphitheater and I'm just so excited and we've really been diving deep into the set list and I'm so excited to just mm. perform I've been all every single performance I've done so far has just been so much fun I, I thought I'd get nervous beforehand um but I'm just like I just need to do it I'm I that drive it's such a great feeling it's not stress it's just like jittery like I want to jump around on stage I want to sing the songs I want to look at people in the audience but yeah that's hopefully the summer I'll get more performances and eventually a tour or open up for someone that'd be oh that'd be amazing oh yeah yeah definitely uh take it as a when is uh really lyric heavy that's uh i was jotting down some of these lyrics too and it's just really uh very deep stuff there uh take it as as a win that you couldn't choose so i made up my mind for you i mean it's like really deep stuff there how, how did that hit you um it was actually a song everyone thought it was um this kind of breakup f u anthem um, and I was like, no, this is actually about like a situation I had with one of my friends, one of my good friends, we kind of were losing, weren't talking as much, arguing a lot more. Um, and so I wasn't feeling the same support and love that I was giving towards them. And I was just like, you know what, if you're, you don't want to be my friend anymore, you can take it as a win, but I'm going to take it as a win because you're way too indecisive for me. And mm -hmm. you're just not giving me what I need at, from a friend. And so I'll make my mind up for you and bye-bye for now. <laughs> Pretty deep getting it down there on, on, on record. That's, that's really good. Uh, good night moon is just this wonderful pulsating beat. It's just really, really uplifting. I really highly recommend people go on YouTube and, and, and check that one out. It's just really just, you really want to uh, lift me up and, uh, get something to be on your, like when you're doing your run or in, on the treadmill or something like that. It's just, uh, really, really good. And I just, yeah, I would look forward to hearing more songs like that in your catalog. Thank you. I'm definitely on the way. Yeah. in the process of <laughs> yeah. making songs. Oh, I love that song so much. And I'm so glad it's out. I waited an, uh, a year to put that one out. I wanted to hold it a little bit longer. Um, it was going to be a summer single. I was like, uh, let's just hold it back mm -hmm. just for a second, you know, get some more people listening to my music and then kind of just drop it on them um but I love that song so much I think it's an interesting message um people can see it two different ways um kind of I, I see it as two different ways uh but how I when I first heard the beat I was just like okay this is a party song this it just makes me want to dance, makes me want to jump in the air, um, kind of just twirl around, spin around. Um, and so during that time we were, it was January, 2021. So things were still closed. Um, people were still at their uh, homes and we were just kind of talking about how much we miss just going out and not for the whole like, drinking and having a crazy night but more just like being on the dance floor with your friends letting loose kind of just like escaping whatever's going on in the moment whatever stress um or whatever stressful situation you're in or it's just kind of it, I go out um to the bars or the clubs just to literally just to dance um and so that's my form of um escaping my reality and so I while I was thinking about this whole idea of wanting to escape I was like how far can we go and then out of nowhere I was just like well good night moon 
And then as soon as that came out of my mouth, I <laughs> grabbed my phone and I was like, good night, moon. And I was like, okay, we got it. And then the stars, I wanted, wanted to reach out to the stars, go all the way to the moon um, and kind of bring that all together and make the song that's out now. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. So what do you got in the future then beyond? Obviously you want to tour. Uh, do film uh, what do you see yourself I'm sure this gets asked all the time what do you see yourself in five or ten years of course you know that's hard to say you know wherever the wind takes me I guess it's hard for me even you know it's like I don't know but if, if your your dream is um, you know what, how many do you want to do an album a year if you were able to do that if you were really catching on or would you give yourself a little bit more time in the next couple of years just to you know, take more time with every project I think I would do an album a, a year if I was given that like opportunity. Um, it's, yeah, I'm trying to think five years. I'm trying to think how old I'd be. I'd be <laughs> um, <laughs> around 27. Okay. Yeah, but when the Beatles uh, broke up, I think they were in their late 20s. They like, kind of hit like when they were like 1920 or something like that. It's insane. Of course, you know, going almost back 50 years ago, 19 or 20 year old was definitely a lot older in certain respects than today. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at all these insane artists um, who are these successful artists. They're like 16, 17. Amazing. Like, wow, I should have done this when I was <laughs> back in music, my musical theater days. I'm like, oh, I should, probably should have released that album of voice memos that I <laughs> had on my garage band. <laughs> yeah. But um, definitely I, my dream is just to go tour all over the world. Kind of, you know, if people... This is, I feel like it's so cheesy, but like people are buying tickets to see you there yeah. or whoever wants to see you is bringing a friend that is mm -hmm. along for the ride. And you, by the end of the night, you might have a new fan or a new person that likes your music. And so just being in a room with people who support you and love you, that's just like, that's the best feeling in the entire world. And they know your songs too. It's kind of like a break for you because you're yeah. just singing with them and having a great time. Um, and I've only done like four or five performances so far and they've just been so much fun. So if I were to be able to do that, not just in California and all over the world, that would be an absolute dream. And yeah, get to see more of this world. Definitely, definitely, definitely get out there and travel. Who knows? Maybe you could play uh, Havana, Cuba one day. Who knows? But <laughs> I don't know if your uh, dad would be so thrilled with that, if, unless things really change over there. Yeah, we'll we'll do a rain check on that one. But that <laughs> I'm sure he's thing. given you some lectures about uh, the history of Cuba. Yeah, I um, learned a lot about Cuba especially recently, but um, I really, I do want to go visit at some point, sometime soon, um, just to kind of see what it was like before everything changes, because everything does change at yeah. some point, but um, right now, we're just going to acknowledge <laughs> it and admire the culture. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a very unique culture. I've been to Coconut Grove over there in Florida, and uh, there's a little Havana and uh, a lot of those little areas there. It's, it's a great influence. The food is just amazing. Uh, Cuban food, wow. Oh, my That's God. <laughs> Every morning, I'm just like, the things I would do for a Cuban pastry right now, the things I would do for a croqueta, oh, my God. I'm my mouth is just watering every time I say that word I'm just like oh my god but <laughs> I know there's uh, that comfort food and they can't you know they can't do this in LA are you kidding me <laughs> it's like what do they know from that you know it's all about avocado toast I'm sure and things uh, like that <laughs> and great Mexican food though I, yeah I, there's this one place where I get these amazing tacos and oh. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a good influence of Mexican there too as well. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this evening. Best of luck as your education winds down and you get out there and uh, get into the real world. It, uh, we look forward to hearing a lot from you then. Thank you so much. It's nice to virtually meet you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm in a, the Atlanta, Georgia area. So if you're usually there's just stopovers here, people don't really come here to visit, but maybe one day I'll get to see you perform in person. Yeah, maybe one day when I'm on tour there. <laughs> absolutely. Well, you have a great evening and best wishes. You too. Thank you so much. Peace. Have a good one. See ya. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.